AI is taking the world by storm, and 2025 is an important year for AI integration across all sectors. But the good thing is for you, as teachers, you are perfectly positioned to use this tool to its maximum potential. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dennis. I've been a teacher for five years and in education for eight. I completed Google's eight hour prompting essentials course. And in this video, we're gonna take those concepts and apply them to the field of teaching. I'm gonna cover two things. First, we're gonna go over the principles of prompt engineering. And then second, we're gonna use those skills to create a great lesson plan. Let's get started. Now, if you've ever asked ChatGPT to do something, congratulations, you've written a prompt. To take it to the next level, prompt engineering is taking those prompts and refining them to get the AI to produce exactly what you want. Now, before we dive into prompting, let's, let's quickly define a couple of key AI terms. A prompt or an input is a text that you write to communicate with an LLM, which is a large language model. And the output is response that the AI gives you as a result of your input. And as you can see right here, LLMs, they are various systems um, trained on large amounts of data. You have a couple right here. We're gonna be using ChatGBT today just as our demo, but you have quite a few options. Let's move on. Mr. Dennis, Mr. Dennis, why do we need good prompts? What a great question. So good prompting increases accuracy, consistency, efficiency, and relevance to make sure you get exactly what you want. Good prompting also reduces vague information and reduces the chance of hallucinations, which are incorrect slash fake information. Because generally speaking, the AI is trying to answer your question at all costs, unless he specifically tell you not to. So the more specific you are in writing your prompts, the better the outcome. An example of a bad prompt is make a lesson on the American Revolution. And there's a couple problems with here with this prompt. First of all, um, the American Revolution is taught at a multiple, uh, multiple grade levels. And so this could be a middle school lesson. This could be a high school lesson and it's not specific. So do you want like, what type of lesson do you want it to be? So a better prompt is you are an experienced curriculum designer, create an 11th grade lesson plan on the American revolution, including objectives, interactive activities, and an exit ticket, align it with California common core standards. And so you're really giving a lot more specific examples. I also included the content standards here as well, in case you wanted to include that as well, but this is an example of a better prompt and we're gonna learn how to do that right now. So this is Google's prompting essentials framework for better prompting known as TCREI or thoughtfully create really excellent inputs. And this stands for task, context, references, evaluate and iterate. Now we're gonna first start with the task because this is probably the most important section of the framework because it defines exactly what you want the AI to do. So the task is the action you want the AI to take. Um, it needs to have a verb. So if you said something like, the sky is blue. The AI is just going to be like, cool. Um, so a few that I personally like are generate, create, list, write, explain, make, and brainstorm. And generally speaking, you can be creative with the verbs. So um, as long as it can do it. So if you said something like swim, it probably would get confused. So try to stick with a verb that it can actually do. An example is create an 11th grade lesson plan on the American Revolution. Two things. You're going to want to include a persona in most cases basically who you want the AI to act as, because it helps the AI generate responses in an appropriate voice and expertise level. So our example is you are an experienced history teacher. And the format preference, you're gonna to wanna to format the response with clear sections such as learning objectives, warm up discussion, primary source activity, and an exit ticket to ensure that the response is structured in a useful way instead of a random block of text. And our example is um, down here at the bottom. You are an experienced history teacher. Our role, create an 11th grade lesson plan on the philosophy that inspired the American Revolution. Task, format the response with clear sections, including learning objectives, warm up discussion, primary source activity, and exit ticket. And that's our format preference. All right, next up is our context. And so generally speaking, you wanna give background information that can help guide the AI's response. And so you can include a variety of things. You can include the grade level, how long the classes are, if you have any learning goals, if you have any specific teaching styles, you can include all the information. And as well as if you, if you have like uh, student information, like if you have gifted students, ELL students, IEPs, et cetera, et cetera. Or if you are coming back from spring break and you have seniors and they are not very motivated, you could also say that as well. Um, don't put specific uh, student data. So don't put like, you know, hey, my student, like this is my roster. Don't put like all their names and their private data. You want to keep uh, keep it really specific and concise, but not you know put any um, 
of your class of your students actually inside your inside the AI. Okay, so from personal experience, um, if you say in your prompt that you have students who have IEPs or if you have English language learners, the resulting lesson is not going to be challenging enough. And so for stuff like that, I like to put that in after you're done with the entire lesson and then mention, hey, I have three students who are still learning English. Can you scaffold this for a, um, and then you can like input the level of their reading. You want to be concise. You can also put in stuff like your class sizes, but only if you think it's going to be relevant information. So if you are designing an activity, right, and the activity has a lot of moving parts and you have a huge class size, maybe mention that so the activity gets simplified down. Um, an example being the class period is 75 minutes long. The lesson should be for 11th graders and focus on critical thinking through primary source activity. And my non-teaching example is give me a recipe for banana bread. I am gluten free and vegan, um, and you can make your gluten-free vegan bread uh, this way. Uh, our next uh, prompt is going to be references. And so your outputs are often gonna be more accurate if you provide examples to help the AI model its responses. You don't always have to do this, especially if you're brainstorming or you're creating something really abstract. But something that I find really helpful is you can upload as an attachment. And so I took a screenshot right here so you can see how to do it. You have this little plus sign and it says upload from computer or from Google Drive. And you can upload previous lesson plans, rubrics, activities, whatever you want, and then ask the AI to model its output based on the example that you're uploading based on things like style, rigor, or tone. And so our example is reference the attached lesson plan and model the lesson with a similar style and rigor. And here's our end result. You are an experienced history teacher. Create an 11th grade lesson plan on the philosophy that inspired the American Revolution and focus on critical thinking through primary source analysis. For format the response with clear sections, learning objectives, warm up discussion, primary source activity, and an exit ticket. The class periods are 75 minutes long. The class is quite gifted and reads at an advanced level. Reference the attached lesson plan and model the lesson with a similar style and rigor. And so we're gonna try to create a lesson that match, like that is a rigorous lesson that is challenging for students, but also um, scaffolded at the same time. After you're done creating your lesson, you're creating your rubrics or whatever you're doing with AI, you wanna evaluate it. You wanna check to see if it matches your standards, if it needs any improvements or adjustments, right? So you're gonna take a look at this thing and think critically. Is this something that I would use? And if it's not, or if it's missing something, that's where iteration comes in handy. Um, and you've probably done this already if you've used ChatGPT. This is the conversational part, right? Where you're asking it to modify or change things, and you're gonna adjust the prompt based on what's missing or unclear. And so an example of this is the current lesson plan lacks student discussion. Revise the prompt to say, uh, include a structured debate where students argue different perspectives on the causes of the American Revolution. And that's our framework. <laughs> and that's our framework for Google's uh, prompting essentials. For, uh, and so that's Google's prompting essentials framework applied to teaching. We're gonna do a live demo because I feel like evaluate and iterate are kind of difficult to show just with slides. And it's better to see this um, with a demo. And we're gonna use the prompt right here that we created with this, uh, with this explanation. Okay, so I did record a live demo, but it was just a lot of like time me sitting there thinking, and it was like 25 minutes long. You don't want to watch that. This will be um, kind of like an overview of what I did. So this is the prompt that I did. Uh, I created for the example in the uh, in the lesson on prompt engineering, and this these are two attachments from Stanford. So Stanford has this group called Sheg. Um, they re recently rebranded about a year ago. But if you teach history in middle school or high school you, in the US, you would know about um, this group. But if you don't, that's just if you teach uh, chemistry or English for context, that's what those lessons, that's where those lessons come from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually scroll down through this and I'll try to scroll down. Um, I'll try not to jump around too much but I just wanna show you what I did, specifically my iteration process and my evaluation process. So the first thing I notice is, hey, the warm up is a little bit too long. Let's make it 10 minutes instead of 15. To be honest, this warm up could be even shorter, but for the sake of this demo, 10 minutes is fine. So that's the first thing I did, really simple. 
And then I decided, let's just go ahead and start creating the lesson because what the lesson does, it gives us a guided reading and annotation, discussion, debrief, and I want to see what this lesson will actually look at. Look at. So I ask it to select ex select excerpts from each of the texts and paraphrase them in a manner that is manageable but challenging to eleventh grade students. And so the the two texts that it selects are John Locke, Natural Rights, and a section from uh, Common Sense called Critique of Monarchical Rule. And so these are the two original excerpts. And then the AI has paraphrased them. I have a problem with the paraphrased version but we'll get to that later. So I also want to see it create some check for understanding questions and discussion questions. And so it's gone ahead and created some check for understanding questions, some discussion questions. The reason why this lesson, demo lesson took so long is because I sat here in silence reading through all of this and thinking about whether it was good or not. And so this is a little bit more manageable is if I just talk through this whole process. Then I say, hey, so far this lesson is really great. It shows the foundations of the Enlightenment, but it's missing something really important. Um, Thomas Paine, you know, he's common sense. That was written to persuade the uh, colonies to go um, rebel against the, uh, the British. But I feel like it needs to be tied more into the American Revolution. So I also ask it to incorporate the Declaration of Independence. And so it's gone ahead and incorporated the Declaration of Independence. It's also paraphrased it. And it's created discussion questions and uh, check for understanding questions as well for the Declaration of Independence. Then I also noticed that in our discussion questions, that the students, right, don't have any um, that they're missing something that's potentially a, val a valuable uh, piece of history, and that's the debate over how much of the revolution was a fight over taxation, right, over economics and how much of the revolution was ideologically motivated. So the Enlightenment ideas, how much. And so I ask the chat GBT, I say the context for context, the students already learned about um, protests over unjust taxation. Can we also add a debate over what, who, what caused the American Revolution? And then you can see here that it's going to update the discussion questions to add more critical thinking about economic factors um, and then ask the students to uh, think about what were like, how did each um, factor impact the American Revolution? I say, hey, let's hold the debate activity as an optional addition because it might take a lot of time. So this is something that like you can do and see how long is the rest of the lesson going to take? Do we have time for the debate activity? And if we do, then we can go ahead and do it. I think we you would have time for the, for the debate activity. But I just say, hey, let's leave that as an optional activity. And you can create infinite optional activities. So you can, if you think that the lesson might not take the whole 75 minutes, you could add more and more and more optional activities. And I also ask it to combine everything into a worksheet and add an exit ticket at the end. So it's gonna go ahead, it's gonna combine all of this stuff into one worksheet, and then it's gonna create an exit ticket at the end. Okay, but we're not done yet. This is kind. This is kind of a long process as you can see. I don't like the paraphrase version because the whole point of this lesson was a primary source analysis activity um, for non-history people. Basically, we're, we want to analyze the text from the time period in the author's own words. And so I say, instead of adding a paraphrase version, can you also add a brief word bank of challenging vocabulary? So I want to remove the paraphrase version because I want the students to think deeply about these texts rather than just reading a summary. So then we have a word bank created. I'm not the biggest fan of this word bank, but it's okay for the purpose of this demo. And then, let's see. I give it three more tasks. I want it to format the student materials in a way that's easy to print. So um, we can just go ahead and, and print this out. And then I want it to create an answer key of possible responses to make my life easier. Um, and I say possible responses because if you've taught history or English, you know that sometimes there's multiple correct answers. And so I wanted to think about what are some different ways students might approach this. And then I also wanted to review the original lesson plan to check for consistency with student materials and adjust any necessary sections because we've made a lot of changes. So I wanted to revisit that first lesson plan that the AI has created and adjust it so that way it is um, relevant to uh, all these changes. It's consistent to all these changes. So. We have these readings removed of the paraphrase section. You have a word bank instead. 
you have these discussion questions. I like these discussion questions and the check for understanding questions. I thought they were fine. Um, and then an exit ticket as well. And then you have an answer key. Okay. And then you even have an a, uh, answer key for your exit ticket. And then you have a revised lesson plan summary. Um, so what I like about this is it explains the adjustments that it made for consistency. So based on the iteration, the, uh, the conversations I've been having with the AI, it explains based on your conversations, this is the change. These are the changes that I made. Okay. I'm not done yet though. So then I also wanted to create a scaffolded version of the original documents and modify it to support learners who are having trouble reading the original text because the original text is co quite complicated. So it's going to go ahead and take the original text, give a scaffolded version. Um, just to give you an example, it says men being as has been said, as has been said by nature are all free, equal and independent. People are by nature free, equal, and independent. Um, actually here, this is a better example. The time has come for us to shake off the chains of monarchy. It is time for us to free ourselves from the control of kings and queens, monarchy, to break the ties of inherited power, to end the system where power is passed down by family, inherited power. So as you can see here, it's gone ahead and still framed it in, actually, this is not, we would want to change this, Payne argues. But it's going to go ahead and frame it more in a first person perspective. Um, so that way, if the, if the students are having trouble understanding the original text, they have something to compare it to. I also like that the, the AI has also given suggestions on how to use the scaffold material. So side by side reading, guided annotations, small group discussions, independent practice. So you can do one or two or three of these things. And then I did a couple more conversational things because I wanted to double check to make sure that these excerpts are accurate. So I asked it, you know, where is this from? They, it clarifies it's from common sense. Where is this from? It's from the section of monarchy and hereditary succession. So I just wanted to do a couple of clarifications and then I noticed it was missing something. It was missing the sourcing information. So this is now the sourcing information and I probably would if I was actually doing this, I would ask it to incorporate the sourcing into the student materials and then recreate it all. But for the purposes of this, um, I'm not actually giving this lesson. You can just copy and paste this into your uh, below the documents that also works well. So the whole point of this is I wanted to show you that even when you create a great prompt, you still need to do iteration. You still need to evaluate, evaluate what the AI is telling you. Uh, what the AI gives you, see what you like, see how you can improve it, and have that conversation with the AI to really mold it to exact to to make it give you exactly what you're looking for. Um, and this is a really important process whenever you're using AI to create anything is the iteration process. So, um, one more thing I wanted to also say is that I could have also asked it to create a PowerPoint because a lot of these. Uh, lessons, I like to give a short 10, 15 minute lecture to give the students context and to get them ready and even maybe model one of these readings, right? So like to do one of the readings with them to help them understand it. And so that's other adjustments I could have made as well. I didn't do it because this would have been an even longer video. So I wanted to just leave it as is, but there are other things that we can do. And I'll, I can show you how to make presentations and stuff as well with AI because it's a really powerful tool and it's super helpful. So my final piece of advice for you is to play around and get comfortable with the tool. I don't really like acronyms, TCREI. I find them really confusing. And so I liked to write down all the things on a post-it note and I would just stick it next to my computer screen. That really helped me out, especially when I was getting started. And there's more advanced methods of prompting, but this should really get you through the vast majority of things that you're trying to do. Um, so for now, this should be good enough. If you made it this far, I would really appreciate that subscribe. I, uh, it would mean a lot to me. I'm trying to hit a thousand views. So hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time.